Climate change has been a pressing issue, not just in Singapore, but really, it's worldwide. Indeed, many countries around the world taking measures to prevent and slow down climate change. And Singapore, of course, is also doing its part in this. Especially for an island like Singapore, you know, we're surrounded by water. And if you think about it, climate change means rising sea levels would, you know at the end of the day, really affect our shores. Yeah, and according to Minister for the Environment and Water Resources, Masagos Zulkifli, Singapore will be using nature-based solutions to deal with sea level rise. I'm very interested to find out how will the nature-based solutions help curb sea levels from rising. Um, you'll remember in the last and most recent uh, National Day rally, our Prime Minister Lee Sien Lung said that Singapore Malays are distinct from their regional counterparts with a unique idea Identity in the way the community practices Islam and emphasizes education. Yeah, the Malay Muslim community in Singapore has definitely come a long way. But let's ask what's next for the community right here in Singapore. We have with us in the studio this morning, Masagos Zukifli, Minister for the Environment and Water Resources and Minister in Charge of Muslim Affairs. Good morning, uh, Minister Masagos, and thank you for taking the time this morning. Good morning. Yeah, Thanks for having me here. You. Great to see you. Climate change. This is like your baby. It's a huge thing, not just in Singapore, but around the world. At the start of the show, I asked, we're such a tiny island, Singapore. What can we do to combat climate change? Well, climate change is something that will affect everybody. So it's not just something that we in Singapore should be worried for ourselves alone. But we have to think about how to, together, rally everybody to take enough action to turn the tide, so to speak, and so to make sure that our planet will survive. I and mean, the only way to do this is to do it together. You talk about doing this together. Um, do you feel that Singaporeans are realising the importance of doing something together now? I would say that after uh, PM's speech and the National Day Rally, the awareness about uh, climate change has certainly increased tremendously. But more importantly, they now understand better what it means and how it impacts Singapore. Yeah, it's not something trendy anymore. This is really serious stuff. I, I've, I've met people who are actually really alarmed yeah. because when uh, PM described how graphically um, Singapore or a third of Singapore could be underwater in a huge sun, uh, storm surge to get a high tide and uh, sea level rise, uh, that really woke everybody up. Yeah. Minister Masagos, curious question. You talked about how nature can help with climate change. How, how would this work? Well, climate change and sustainability are issues of our time and has redefined how we uh, need to run government, uh, produce policies, uh, and even force producers to rethink about how they produce things. So even in Singapore, I, I will give you one example where water is concerned, for example. We, we can produce water through desalination. Um, that's no magic. You, in the past, we just boil water. Yeah. Today, we use reverse osmosis, which means that uh, we force water through some membrane and then the water comes out clean. Uh, those, those are almost intuitive. But uh, nature shows us there are also better ways to do it. For example, there's something called biomimetics, where we know fish uh, use certain proteins to filter seawater to get fresh water within themselves. And they do that at the lowest energy possible. And that's, that's what nature gives us. And because of this, and the research that we're doing in our laboratories, we have found that we can now use theoretically this method to desalinate our water at less than half the energy we do today. So that's, that's, that's really promising. I've already seen uh, our laboratories lining up these synthetic proteins in our membranes. And guess what? If we can do it right and we can scale it, not only will we benefit and use less energy and therefore less carbon footprint, we can export this, this, mm -hmm. this technology. So we mentioned, Minister, that um, the Prime Minister in the National Day Rally speech talked extensively about this. You know, obviously the awareness is increasing, like you said. Um, and you've already given us some examples of how Singapore is tackling the issue. What would you say, where would you say we are on progress? And where do we go from here? We definitely have a plan. And the plan comes in two parts. One is mitigation, which means what can we do as a government, as people, 
and externally with other partners to reduce the greenhouse gas emission. Sure. And on the other hand, uh, what should we do in the event and inevitable event that uh, the, the, the worst parts of climate change come upon us? And for Singapore, that would be sea level rise. And that's called adaptation. So the kind of things that we do for both of these will make an impact, some for ourselves, but more also what we contribute to what everyone in the world is doing together. Minister Masagas, you can't help but think that for a government, uh, for leadership to tackle uh, climate change is a very long-term planning. Is there a short-term plan? What's the most immediate thing that the government's looking at? Well, I think the most impactful thing that we can do sure. for that is to try and produce or to transform our, the way we live, a cultural change. And that goes through some little small things that we have to make adjustments for. Uh, let's use less plastic bag. Let's not use pet bottles for our water because PUB water is so clean, you can get it off the tap. Um, let's uh, use our clothes for as long as possible. Don't think that it can always be recycled because fabrics, uh, shoes, they don't get recycled. They, don't, they cannot get recycled very easily. And therefore, sustainable consumption is the way to go. I'm glad that many of our young uh, are into this. Uh, they, they don't want to use plastic bottles. They carry their own reusable uh, uh, utensils. Um, and they are very much aware of this. Um, so we just have to adjust the way we live. We don't have to be uh, uh, hermits. We don't have to live as, as ascetics. Uh, just... Uh, wind down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered a bit about that because, I mean, and I think a lot of our listeners would agree, everywhere you go, and particularly, you know, you go to a hawker centre, there's still a lot of plastic mm. being used in places like this. But, you know, I noticed recently going to see a movie that there is a public information campaign. So what are sort of other initiatives are there out there to encourage people to use less plastic and to be more environmentally friendly? Well, NTUC, for example, has uh, introduced uh, a scheme where if you don't take the plastic, uh, you get incentives. Uh, or if you want the plastic, you have to buy right. uh, mm. well, some, some, some extra cost when, uh, to, to put your groceries in. Uh, we, we have to be pragmatic about it because in Singapore, our plastics, uh, plastic bags particularly are used to tr uh, bag our trash. That's not a bad thing because if we don't do that, then we have other problems. We will have pests in our in our chutes, sure. and, and our chute will corrode much faster. Um, and then uh, we put all these together and incinerate them. And and before the the exhaust the put, uh, comes out, we actually scrub them so that even the most dangerous gases that are like dioxin, that's a cancer causing, they yeah. get they, 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 they get suppressed. They, they don't they don't go out. So we have, we have an engineering solution for this. So we, we, we are mindful of the environment. Uh, however, the only real way to reduce the, the amount of pollution and or gas, uh, greenhouse gas effect is to use less bags. Right. And unfortunately, many of us take more bags than what we need. <laughs> uh, so those, those are the kind of things, uh, adjustments in our behavior that yeah. we can do to make a big impact. Yeah, all the double, triple bag. <laughs> yes. And sometimes the aunties are really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> so what about food waste? Because Manisha talked about being at a hawker centre. I mean, we see it all the time. Yeah. Is there a way to deal with this? Well, food waste is one very interesting uh, area of uh, solutioning. Uh, we, we used to think about waste in a way humans do. I mean, just dispose it, uh, treat it or something. But nature does not, has, does not have waste. Waste is a human concept. So food, for example, could be used in many ways. Before they expire, we could we get them to places where people need them. But even before, after they expire, you can actually process food for energy, for compost, uh, for nutrients, things that we can use before they decay and become unusable. Okay. Uh, by 2025, we will be, we'll be co-digesting food with sludge or wastewater and we will be producing three times more biogas than doing it separately. Uh, that's, this technology or this vision is so compelling that uh, PUB actually won an award last week in, in uh, Dubai for, for, for coming up with uh, such scale and with such uh, uh, implementation of uh, food waste uh, processing. 
Wow. On, I mean, on that note, I mean, winning PB, winning an award for this over in Dubai, is there, is there a hope also that Singapore will become a hub for this kind of technology in the future? Absolutely. Well, we want to replicate the success that PUB has made for Singapore, making us uh, famous for our water solutioning and then making that also a solution in the face of climate change for our other areas of uh, experimentation that will involve environment, waste uh, management, as well as food production. We're in the studio this morning with Masago Zulkifli, who is the Minister for the Environment and Water Resources and Minister in Charge of Muslim Affairs. After traffic, we turn our attention to the Malay Muslim community here in Singapore. You're on Money FM. A special feature interview with Minister Masagos Zulkifli, Singapore's Minister of the Environment and Water Resources and Minister in Charge of Muslim Affairs on Money FM 89.3. Money FM 89.3